So is biohacking becoming an addiction? I wanna give you my thoughts on it from the realm of a sport medicine physician. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sonam and I'm an interventional sport medicine doctor located up here in Canada. If you find any of these videos helpful, I would really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, share these videos so that it can reach, reach a wider audience. For now, let's get back to my thoughts on biohacking. During COVID, people became really interested in their own health, whether it was longevity, staying healthy, but really kind of staying outside of the traditional medical system by keeping themselves healthy. And we had people like Andrew Huberman and Peter Atia and the likes of them really start getting popular. And I loved it because this meant people started getting interested in science and started to understand that health, nutrition, sunlight, all of that stuff was really, really important to themselves. The problem became over the course of a few years, I saw the landscape of this shift. Things became rigid. People started saying that every minute of their day had to be perfectly scheduled to create the most optimal schedule that in itself, people became addicted to all these biohacking techniques, whether it was red light therapy, different types of supplements, peptides, saunas, cold plunges. A lot of these things were one, inaccessible to people because they were expensive, but two, overwhelming because the sheer vast amount of information about this stuff was just overwhelming in itself. And I can tell you personally, I, I follow all these individuals and I found that there was a lot of really good knowledge to be shared. And I shared some sleep toolkit information with my patients who had insomnia. I shared some other cardiovascular protective information with my patients who had heart disease. But what even I started realizing, and I'm a doctor in this field, I got overwhelmed with all the rec recommendations that was made. And I find that people are realizing that all the recommendations that are made to sleep well, to eat well, to move well, can be astronomically very overwhelming. And people can spend their entire day trying to optimize for a perfect lifestyle. And now the going joke is you gotta be a very rich CEO with no work to do to be able to employ all these techniques. And I'm not saying that these techniques are not important, but I think that we're starting to lose the actual core of what we're trying to do. And really to try to maintain a healthy lifestyle, I don't think you need all of these things because I think it causes more stress and more unrest than it's helping right now. At the end of the day, people are feeling paralyzed. And when you're paralyzed, you do nothing. And what I started realizing personally is you have to get back to the roots. And if you can just get back to the roots, don't worry about having the latest and greatest and timing everything to the exact minute and making sure that you see the light the first second it comes out because that can be extremely overwhelming for the average person. So I'm gonna boil it down to very simple things that I think everybody should look into and really just continue to live your life. So here are my six recommendations on how to keep this easy, live a healthy long in life, but not get overwhelmed by all of these biohacking technologies. So number one is eat whole foods. We all know if you eat whole foods, you're getting better nutrients. Number two is to sleep, right? So try to get the most amount of sleep you can and try to keep it consistent. Number three, move your body, whether it's going for walks, doing resistance training. At the end of the day, find something that you enjoy, have it combine both cardio and resistance and do it. You don't have to time the perfect rep, the perfect sets. Yes, there's a time and place for that. But at the end of the day, if you're not active, start getting active and you've already made amazing strides to your health. Number four, have healthy relationships. So this is really important. And this is if you ever looked into blue zones and why people in blue zones live so long, it's that their sense of community and sense of relationships is very strong. So having healthy relationships, friends, families, coworkers, the likes, is actually really important for your internal soul. So really look at prioritizing that around you as well. Number five, have a purpose. So whether it's hobbies, whether it's volunteering, whether it's having a purpose in your job, a lot of people find that they feel better, live longer, live more happily if they have something that makes them feel purposeful in their life. And it doesn't need to be having a job that saves the world. It just has to be something that makes you feel like you have purpose in your daily life. Number six, learn to quiet the mind. People do this in a variety of ways. You can meditate, you can do mindfulness, you can go for walks for nature. You can find something that puts you into the flow state, color, write, whatever you want, but just get into a, a state of, you know, just internal flow in your brain. And it's done in a variety of ways, but it really helps calm the mind and calm the nervous system down. Now you may find that a lot of these recommendations are general, but they're, they are so that they can be adapted person to person. I just find that things have gone so far the other way where you're timing your supplements to every second of your day and your sleep schedule to the exact minute and the day that you get, or the time that you get up to the exact second that it gets overwhelming for a lot of people. 
And a lot of people also just can't afford all of the biohacking technologies that are available to us. Yes, there's some really cool stuff coming out and I still nerd out about a lot of this stuff, but it got to a point where I just took a step back and I said, I'm gonna focus on these core six things. And I feel like ever since I've done that, things feel a lot better. And I try to share this with my patients as well, because I find that people are constantly getting overwhelmed on a day-to-day -day basis. In the realm of information, you can also get lost in it. So I hope that just kind of brings everything back to kind of ground zero. Start here and then build up from here if you want, but know that you don't have to do everything right to, to live a nice, happy, long life. So I hope you enjoyed my perspectives on this. I'd love to chat more about whether or not people think biohacking is becoming an addiction. Leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. For now, that's all.